So, as I'm sure you folks have noticed, over the past few months, I have made many references to my opinion that all good sci-fi from the United States in the 70s and early 80s is essentially The Fugitive with a science fiction backdrop. Today, I'm going to be expanding on that thesis. A couple things before we move forward. One, there's going to be spoilers. And two, for crying out loud, hit like and subscribe. I'll take either at this point. Moving forward. So a little exposition here. Many people over the years have drawn comparisons to the TV series of The Fugitive, where the main character, Richard Kimball, is a doctor wrongly convicted for murdering his wife and later exonerated, and the actual story of Dr. Sam Shepard, who was convicted for killing his wife and later exonerated. But effectively what The Fugitive is, is it's the story of this Richard Kimball who manages to escape and he goes on a quest to find the one who actually did murder his wife, all the while being relentlessly pursued by Inspector Javert, <clears throat> Lieutenant Gerard, who um, ends up really destroying his life trying to pursue Kimball's. Now that brings me to the major story arc of this series. It has three things. One, it has a main character we can somehow identify with, not necessarily someone who murdered his wife, but just an everyday character who's being persecuted for something he didn't do. What could be more endearing? It also has a couple other things. It has something he's pursuing. In this case, it's the person who killed his wife. And the pursuer, those who are trying to put him back in prison or execute him or whichever. But there's one more element which makes this show so wonderful. Each episode had an independent story arc. That is to say, uh, a micro story uh, with very little crossover between other episodes. So you could actually sit down and really dig into that one episode, not necessarily having seen the episodes before or after. Brilliant. In fact, Richard Kimball, in many episodes, is hardly even involved. Although, generally speaking, what he does is he somehow involves himself into the story, helps the people out, and then in the last part of the show, gets out of Dodge, leaving this world just a little bit better than when he found it. Moving forward... As you've probably already deduced, there were many science fiction series that actually share this same template. My personal favorite, as I'm sure you people will, oh, which I've lost, which I'm sure most of you people will probably already know before I even say it, Planet of the Apes. This show was my favorite series when I was a kid. My best friends, too. And we used to have sleepover nights where we would, like have an exchange program, who gets to sleep over with what, and bring the snacks, and we'd stay up late and watch it. It was a lot of fun. It was canceled after one series. Still haven't quite gone over it yet. But in any event, the main characters, in this case two, uh, Burton and Gordon, let's go with that, uh, they're astronauts from basically our time who get stuck in a time loop and go into a future, which has been taken over by apes. And it's that same story arc. Um, they're being ruthlessly pursued by General Urko, who is the archetypical bad guy. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. And they're tr this is a little thin. They're trying to find supposedly some bizarre scientific technology which will allow them to return to the past. It's never adequately explained, and to be honest, it's kind of a dead end. But a, they could, every week, they would end up in a new prefecture, village, area. There'd be some insurmountable problem, an evil dictator... Uh, uh, an evil ruler, uh, an evil religious figure. They really ran the gambit. And our heroes and Roddy McDowell, who was their ape friend Galen, would somehow resolve the problem and then, just under the wire, escape the clutches of Orico. And I think this could have gone on indefinitely. But of course, since I love the show, of course I would feel that. It was also shit, speaking to Roddy McDowell, there was another in even more short-lived series. It was called The Fantastic Journey, which is basically about uh, airline crash survivors which end up in an island in the Bermuda Triangle 
and they're trying to get home. And in this mystical world, they end up going from one alternate dimension to another. Uh, and each dimension, again, same thing. They find uh, people in need, distress. Generally, they think they can help them, but they, they can't. But they end up making the people who they find a little bit better off before they move on, trying to get to Evo Land, which will let them get home. And again, this, this archetype is not rare. In fact, I rushed to say it before you do. Well, Gene Roddenberry, he didn't use The Fugitive. He used Wagon Train in his space opera Star Trek. Well, he also made another series of pilots. Uh, one was called Genesis 2. The others were called Planet Earth. And I, oh, I'm on the home stretch. Strange New World, I think it was called. Yes, that's it. And it features, again, a time traveler, in this case, Dylan Hunt uh, with Alex Cord in the first installment, uh, late great John Saxon in the second R.I.P., Mr. Oracle. And what happens is he's from our time, a science experiment goes wrong, and he ends up waking up in the future after a post-apocalyptic event. And had the show been picked up each episode, he would have found himself going into a new part of the country trying to rebuild and finding a group or groups of people who need his help, which, of course, he does. Um, I bet you guys can name a whole bunch more short-lived and even some long-term series that also fit this template. So I'm going to let you do some digging and get back to me. Am I way off the mark? Am I close to on the mark? You tell me. Other than that, I'll let you guys go. Uh, one other thing while I have your attention, um, I did test negative for the COVID. Um, for those of you who sent me the positive vibes, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, apparently it worked. Um, and for those of you who are struggling with um, the need to get tested, I wish you all the luck in the world. It's a very stressful situation. And I'll be thinking and or praying for you. Oh, one last thing. I got to do a shout out to my uh, YouTube mentors, the Sunstroms. They were talking about one of my favorite Lark comedy shows uh, a week or so back, Get a Life. And um, they're going to be doing the review, so I don't want to step on any toes, but I got to tell you, one of my favorite facts from Get a Life was, had it been picked up for a third series, because each season was going to be completely different, therefore microcosmic, it would have been a Richard Kimball-style situation. He wasn't going to be in any set one area. He was going to go from town to town. Only instead of making everybody's life a little bit better, he was going to destroy it. <laughs> and I think that had limited potential as well. <laughs> anyway, uh, keep watching, be safe, and thank you very much.